I actually want to start with the title of one of your books. Okay. I've loved you since forever. Mm. So had you known forever that you wanted to be a mom? Forever. I've known I've known that forever, but it's like you know, you make choices in your life and when you make one choice, you don't know whether or not you're erasing another one. You don't know if by making one decision you are somehow almost inadvertently, you know, putting an end to a, another choice. So for my whole life, like my career road sidecar, always, always, because I worked so hard and every time I, I went somewhere, I said, oh, this is, you know, this is important. This is the next job. I always assumed I would be a mother. I don't, I don't know that I thought there was any other you know, choice for me personally, but I kept thinking the timing, you know, when it was time, it would, it would reveal itself. I had no idea that, you know, I would be standing um, in a moment kind of going through a divorce and just having gone through breast cancer and having a doctor say, when I said, well, can I freeze my eggs? And the doctor basically said, well, have you ever frozen an egg before, like a real egg? Do you know what happens there? It's not often viable at this stage. And I just couldn't even comprehend what she was telling me, and I tried to block it. And But, I, but somehow, I always kind of kept a little secret belief or yearning maybe but I dreamt about it my whole life and did you know going into treatments for your cancer that that was a potential outcome or was it a shock to hear that um it was surprising to hear it I went through my cancer the way I wanted to which is I'm not the doctor my job is to be calm and not stressed and let the top surgeons and you know oncologists do their thing. No matter how hard I fought cancer, it was either going to do its thing or not. And so I didn't dive deep into all that stuff. My sister did, but I didn't. I refused. And so when she said that to me, and I remember it very vividly, I, I was almost like it was almost too much for me to bear or believe that choice wasn't mine anymore. And I had to do what I think a lot of women do. You're like, well okay, um, I have lots of blessings in my life. And I get to have a lovely mom and sister and brother and lovely nieces and a lovely circle of friends that feel like family and a job I enjoy. And that's what I get and just say thank you. So I just went along that path for a long time. And I've heard you talk about how you sort of pushed the idea out of your head and specifically yeah. said, like, I have these nieces, this is my role yes. in the world, and kind of tried to convince yourself, like, okay, the path to motherhood is not actually for me. When did you stop fighting that and realize oh. that that was not actually how you felt? You know, it's so funny. I was actually with a girlfriend, and we were walking down a street, and I remember it like it was yesterday. And she said, because I had never shared it with anyone that I had wanted I still yearned for it because it seemed like wanting to go to the moon. You know, it's not happening, so don't even bring it up. So she said, you know, well, neither of us wanted, really, you know, were wanted to have children. And I looked at her and I said, well, I do. I didn't say did, I said, I do. And she looked at me and she goes, what? And I started crying, I said, I do, I do. Like I said it out loud, I do. It was so weird and it was a, everyday moment that turned into an epiphany and I had never spoken it and it just reminded me that sometimes you know if you say out loud your secret even if you whisper it or even if you just mumble it to a friend or even if it's just to yourself in the bathroom mirror however you say it when you say it something happens and I'm I wasn't a believer in that until then and I was like I said it out loud and I was like oh my god I do want to have children right now, like here yeah. in my current state, you know. And then when you said it, was it like, okay, I, I'm on this path. We, I want to do this immediately. Well, um, I wasn't, I didn't think about the urgency in that moment, but I was newly dating uh, a man who I had met who had a grown daughter of his own who was going to law school. And we had been dating for a while and we were talking about moving in together. And I realized in that moment, like, I can't carry this with me. 
So before we make a big move to move in together, which is something we were talking about, I have to, this has to come up. And were you, know, you how nervous? Weird, yeah, I was, I was terrified. I was like, I, w- I was rehearsing in my head, how am I going to say this? You know, this is, and I don't know his reaction. And I think what I was probably the most scared of was that I knew I was going to do it anyway. So it was going to be, depending on what he said, would have depended on whether or not he was going to be in my life. And I wasn't sure that I wanted that to go away because it was amazing. All these things were kicking around, and I remember approaching him, and my heart was pounding, and I was sweaty. I could, I still remember it. And I said to him, um, you know, Joel, I have to ask you something, and I haven't been sleeping well lately because it's been weighing on me, and I can't carry it anymore. So I'm going to say something to you and I don't want you to answer me right now. I want you to sit with it and take your time. Don't answer and, you know, just take a week, take as long as you need. And he was like, what the, what is she going to tell me? And I looked him in the eye and I said, you know, um, I would like to explore adoption with you. And in that, there was like a second in there. I was like, this is the end of a relationship or the beginning of a family. Like this is happening in in a snap, in an instant. And my heart was pounding, and he just looked at me, and he said, I don't need a week. And in that moment, I, like, fell on his chest and was sobbing. And I I said, he said, I didn't know you were carrying that. And I said, and he knew, like, I knew in that moment I chose right because it was the thing that would make me the happiest on earth. And um, he wasn't going to deprive me of it because I was going to do it anyway, I think. But... It made the, all the decisions so easy and clear. And I said, I chose right. I chose a man who chose my happiness over his convenience maybe in that moment. And Put so over six minutes in and I already want to sob and I have chills. <laughs> it was such a beautiful, life-changing moment for, for us, for me and for Joel. And at that point, and I think the, you know, the title of the book, which you quoted, I've, you know, I've loved you since forever. I think then I could see it. Before it was an ima- something imagined, but I could see, like I had conversations with God about it after that. I wrote in my journal and I wondered, you know, are you here? Are you about to be born? Are you sleeping under the same stars right now? Are you out there somewhere, you know, choosing me? You had loved her since forever. Had you thought about adoption since forever? Or had was that not a path that you'd considered until you had to um, consider it? Yeah, I never considered it until I had to. Families, I just, you know, you, you realize they come in so many different ways. And my brother and his wife had adopted a little girl from Ethiopia, um, Ella, who was like the, the apple of our eye. And they had adopted and so I was familiar with that, um, just the process a little bit and how lovely and how wonderful and how families come in different ways. And I thought to myself, I want to do that. And I just, I, I, I know that the adoption agency said there's a child out there just for you. Um, and I believed, I believed it then and I believe it today. And so it was just about filling out paperwork and so you tell know. me a little bit about that process. And I imagine you started pretty quickly after that I did. conversation right after, with Joel. Right after, right after Joel said, yes, I called an adoption agency and I filled out tons of paperwork. It takes a long time to do all the criminal background and all that stuff. And they come to your house and they check to make sure that everything is safe and sound. And they check, you know, they, they sit with you. They ask you all kinds of weird questions. Like, I didn't know the process, but you sit with them and they say, you know, who comforted you when you were sick, when you were a little girl? How did your parents discipline you? Were you ever hit? And you're sitting with somebody in your home, and it's hours and hours and hours and hours of that. But it's really revelatory, you know, and it makes you think about how you would discipline. Like, did was the silent treatment something common in your home? You know, was that, how did you know when you did something wrong or, you know, and I thought that being comforted when you were sick, how did they, was it with like orange juice and a blanket or did someone sit with you? Did they give you something? Were they there? You know, just anyway, all these things that make you think about how you would parent. And after I filled out the paperwork, it was a whole, you know, wait and see thing. And I have to tell you, Zoe, like 
the timing was insane. We got the last bit of paperwork in, the last bit of criminal background check and all those things. And I think it was like a month later. Joel and I had moved in and we were living in there for a month. And I was, and the, the people from the adoption agency said, if you, we ever call you, please pick up quickly. And I was sitting actually right here where I am right now at that desk. And um, I was on a, some kind of a call about something and a text came through and it said, Ashley project because I called it the project because I didn't want to you know I, I didn't want to like tell anybody what I was doing I didn't want anyone to see it it said call me and I looked at that text and my heart was pounding and I hung up on the call and I grabbed a yellow pad that was on my desk and I wrote down like eleven fifty three a.m. this is the moment that it all changes there will be a before and after I didn't even know for sure and when I dialed her number I will not forget it. I mean, my heart was pounding, and it was Ashley and another lovely friend of mine who was on the phone, too, from the adoption agency. They were on two different lines, and they said, Hoda, and I said, yes, and they said, she's here. Oh. And I was like, I mean, I don't know what giving birth feels like, but I sure know what my heart felt like when I heard those words, yeah. and it felt, it was just amazing, and I... I hung up the phone and I thought, oh my God, she's here. She's here. She's here. And they sent me a picture and I called Joel. I called my mom. I called my sister. I called, you know, I called my, my best friends. I was like, oh my God, she's here. She's here. And then, you know, that was the beginning. So what did you know about her and her background? And, you know, were you matched with her in that moment? They asked me, you know, what would you be interested in as a mother who do you see in the frame that's what they ask you who do you see in the frame and I said I see anybody I don't see I don't I don't care like I couldn't care less race sex it doesn't matter I said whatever comes I'm here it's for me I know it like I believe in the universe and God and all that stuff I said I believe that it she will he will you know, be meant for me. So I knew nothing about her. And they gave me some details about her background afterwards. And um, I mean, I was happy to know whatever details. And I was also happy not to know any I didn't care. Sure. I, I just knew that she was ours. And she is a she was going to be loved um, beyond what I think she would have ever like I don't know dreamt of that was yeah. my goal like love her more than she could have ever imagined so when your life changes at eleven fifty three, you make <laughs> that call you call yeah. all of the important people oh. in your life I imagine it sets like a crazy few days in motion did you have to fly to go meet well, her yeah I did when the baby's born in the way I think it works in most adoption agencies is there's a 30-day period where the birth mother you know has you know flexibility because sometimes people change their minds and you have to be available for that. And at the 30 day m moment, that's when you can go and pick her up. So from that moment, there was 30 days. And so I waited. So during the 30 days, I was like, what's a rock and play or I don't know, whatever. I didn't even know, like I, no idea. I'm like, Oh my God, zero diapers come in zero. Like, what formulas, like, I didn't know any of the things. And um, I did fly to go get her. And it what was, was that flight like? Oh, Who my were God. You, with? you know, what's funny, Joel, at that point was actually in the middle of some huge work deal. My best friend uh, flew with me to scoop her up. And on the way there, it's so this sounds so weird. But Sandra Bullock was really helping with some guidance about like, don't be scared. She was one of the people who I looked to to realize that someone like me of the same age could do these things. And she described like the most beautiful um, part of her life began when, when her kids entered it. And so um, she sent me, you know, some texts and I was reading them and I was playing, you know, music by Ingrid Michaelson. I don't know why I love Ingrid Michaelson. I was just playing that music and f flew there and then landed and met Karen there. And um, you wait in a room 
You just stand there and you wait. And I did. And I can Were you it. nervous? I was just, I mean, I have tingles right now. Like right now, I feel that like, it's like you know that the biggest, one of the biggest moments of your life is about to happen right in front of you. And that door swung open and I just, I mean, I don't even remember who was carrying her because all I could see was her. And they put her in my arm right here. And I, I, I'm not a, like, I, I haven't carried many babies. I, she fit like she was born there. And I, I exhaled and I was like, oh my God, oh my God. She, and it was, it was one of those things where I looked down and these eyes were looking at me and I thought to myself, forever, for as long as I am breathing, I have a breath in me, like you will be protected and loved and cared for. And she felt like mine right then. It didn't take any time. It, it happened instantly for me. Everybody's different, but boy, did that feel good. Maybe. Do you, do you remember the first thing you said to her? I knew her name was, was Haley. My sister and I, we talked about like Haley's Comet. It's like a once in a blue moon you know, that something beautiful like that happens. And I just remember looking at her and she, and I said like, hi Haley. Like, you know, sometimes you wonder, does the name fit? And her eyes were looking right up at oh. me. And it was, um, boy, it was magic. I still can't believe like, and sometimes you wonder about, you know, do you, what, what do you deserve in life? And what, you know, what do you deserve? And sometimes when I look at her and I looked at her then, and even today you wonder, is that, did I get more than my share? Like, I feel like I did. Um, but it's, she changed everything. Like talk about a world snapping into focus. Yeah. I, anyway, she changed the world for me. So it sounds, I mean, you're saying you connected with her immediately. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. some people, regardless of the path that they take to motherhood, whether it's adoption or not, it takes them a little while for that maternal instinct to kick in. Did you just yeah. have it the second she was in your arms? It ha I had it. And I didn't know what I was doing either. It's not like I knew I had any idea. I had no idea what I was doing. They were like, change your diaper. I was like, does the, what part goes where? Like, I didn't have any skills. But I did have a feeling, and I didn't know how to do all the things, but I had a feeling. And um, I remember some of the best advice I got, which was like the next day or so, was from a friend too, Maria, and she said I was kind of rocking her and doing stuff. And Maria goes, what are you, what are you doing? I said, I'm just playing with her, you know, playing with her. And she said, babies don't need that. She said, I said, well, what do they need? And she said, they need what you need. And I said, oh, okay, what's that? She said, to be looked at, to be talked to, to be listened to, to be held, to be made to feel secure. That's all they need. And it was sort of like the lights went on. So I think I had the love. I just didn't have any skills. I didn't know how to do all the things you needed to do as a mother. But was I scared? Yes. Did I? Was I afraid I was going to break her? Yes. Was I scared <laughs> about, you know... Like, poor Joel. Did you always envision a family with more than one child? Yes, I did. Um, I did because there are a lot of things you evaluate in your life when you're an older parent. Like, I, I feel like I'm. there's so many pluses. I can't even quantify them all. There's so many. You know, you're calmer. You have your priorities straight. You, you understand. You have all these things. But, you know, I'm also keenly aware that I want someone who can share a life alongside you know, two, two, two siblings that can share life alongside one another long after we're gone. And I've thought of that. And it's, I hate to think about it, quite frankly, but I want someone who says, do you remember when, or aren't mom and dad weird, or, you know, or all those things, just someone to hold hands with through life. And so there was never a doubt that it was going to be, to me, more than one uh, child, never a doubt in so my mind. How soon yeah. after you brought Haley home, did you start thinking about starting I, that process? I, I called at six months. And they said, you have to wait nine months because that's the the rule as if you were actually having the baby. Got it. So they said at nine months, you can reapply. And I did. We applied right at nine months because that's how much I wanted it and how much I loved every bit of it. 
Um, I, you know, I'm a worker at work. I took six months off. I've never taken six months off in my life. Never. And it was probably the easiest decision I've ever made. And I've heard you talk about how immediately your priorities shifted. And it was like, if everything was taken away from me, if I lost my job, if I lost everything, yeah. as long as I have her, it's okay. Isn't that funny? Like all the things I valued and treasured, all the things that mattered to me, and all of a sudden, it could all fall away. Like even if today, because I think about that some days, because you never know what life has in store for you. Like where would I be? And all I know is when I put the key in the door, or when I open the door after work, or on Saturday, I only get Saturday and Sunday mornings because I leave at like three in the morning. But all those other days, I have to tell you, there is no better feeling. It's like a ticker tape parade. Yeah. And you can't believe it's happening for you. Hope is a dream child. She is a dream child. It is as if they shared the same blood, the same everything. She and Haley, they are intertwined. They hold hands. They don't let go. They're actually in the same school. One's two and a half and one's four and a half. They write each other notes because of COVID they can't see. And the teachers deliver them. Stop it. That's what they're doing. They're two and a half and four and a half. Like I'm so blown away by the love they share. I keep thinking like, I want to be a better parent. I want to be, you know, I want to be firm, but I also want them to have like the time of their life. Like I want to have more patience than my parents had. I want to be, but I also, you know, realize that kids who are, are handed, um, you know, who, who don't have much kind of difficulty growing up, sometimes have trouble adjusting in adulthood. Like I want strong adults, strong grownups when they grow up. I feel like I'm busy prepping them now because I, you know, life is weird. You don't yeah. know. So I, I'm trying really hard to make sure that they are on the right, um, on the right path. I can't, I'm, I am like, some days I'll wake up and I'll go, do I seriously have two kids sleeping yeah. down the hall from me? Like, and do, I watch them on the monitor cause they share a room and I just, they sing songs and I'm like, I'll take care of you. Don't worry. Hope. Hope's like, sissy, do you need a hug? I'm like, what is happening? Oh my How God. is this possible that this is me, the career driven, hard driving, you know, blah, 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 you know? And then it just reminded me like, when you think life passed you by, just slow down a minute and see. Maybe, maybe, maybe it didn't. Maybe I remember feeling yet. the same way when my son was born. I said to my husband, like, I feel like our world is so tiny, but I meant it in a good way. In like good all way. that matters is right here. And like, yes. who knows what's happening outside this little who circle? Who cares? Yeah. Yes. There could be all kinds of crap going on around the world in our own country. And it's not that I'm not engaged or listening, but of course, the only thing I have control over is this space, yep. right? My child, my daughter, Hope, Haley, Joel, I can make our place cozy, our place a sanctuary, our place peaceful, our place full of love. When we step out the door, I can't control that. You know, they're going to school, Joel's going to work, I'm going out. Like, but when we come home, this space right here, like this is going to be a beautiful, comfortable, lovely, safe, peaceful place. So tell me at nine months, you decide I want oh, yeah. a sibling. So yes. how long did it take to, to it find took, out about Hope? Yeah, it took another year and a half. I mean, uh, we were we were waiting and waiting. And I kind of wondered, like, I kept thinking, okay, no matter what happens, you are you, you have been given more gifts than you could have ever imagined. It was around Mardi Gras. And um, I had my book coming out and they called and they said, well, it's a great holiday. It's Mardi Gras around this time. You got a book coming out and you might think that book is kind of like your baby, but we have some more news. And I was like, oh my God, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. And uh, this time Joel and I both flew uh, to scoop her up. I mean, there are a lot of beautiful pictures of Joel and the kids, but probably none more beautiful than when he's holding hope for the first time. He's crying and he's looking at me like, oh my gosh. And we cuddled her up and we brought her home and we introduced her to Haley. And, what was that introduction? Like? Oh my God, because we've been telling her, I'm going to have a sister, a sissy, a sissy. You know, she didn't know. And she kept looking at her and touching her. She, In fact, we had a bassinet that was above and she slept underneath 
the bassinet. That's oh. where Haley was sleeping. It was That's super so cute. Sweet. Can it's you believe we have, aren't we lucky? No, yes. How do we yes. get to do this? I know. It's so wonderful. <sighs> so I'm curious if someone were sitting in front of you and said, I'm considering adopting, I don't know much about it. What's the advice or the guidance you would give to that woman? I would say, first of all, the decision that you are making right now is the, is the best decision you'll ever make. I don't care what decisions you've made in the past or what's in the future. This one right here, uh, wanting to adopt. And you're not adopting to save a child. Like you're not, that's not why you're adopting. You're adopting for, to save you. Like you're adopting to fulfill a part of you that is missing. Whenever someone says to me, oh, well, wow, what a great thing you're doing by adopting. It's like, no, no, no. I haven't done one thing except for I've just, I've been enriched. I've gained. I don't think, I can't think of anything that has gone the other way. And the adoption process can be long and it can be difficult, but it's just, I mean, look, people go through labor. It's long and it's difficult. When that baby is placed in your arms, there are very few things that are life-changing. I didn't know that, you know, like everything good was going to happen after 50 for me. I had no clue. I mean, who th would have thought that? And I thought I had all the highs and all the loves and everything. And then all of a sudden, I get this happens. I'm like, oh my God. Like, I, like, who's the love of my life? These girls. I mean, I love Joel, but of your life, the loves of your life, it's literally as if, you know, my heart is running around right now at a day, at a, at a, at a kindergarten. I can feel it. I can feel them. And to know that you can like experience this kind of emotion and have this kind of a bond. I mean, I, I smile all the time when I think about it. And even on the worst days, and there are plenty of those, I still think to myself, oh my God, like I get to do this. Like I get to. Something that maybe someone would take for granted. Like, oh, well, I'm a mama. Well, what a headache. I'm like, when you've been dying for something your whole yeah. life, and, and when it comes to this stage, someone says, okay, you can have a crack at it. You're like, oh my God, like, thank you. I'll hold it with kid gloves. I'll treasure yep. it. I'll, you know. I feel the same way. Sometimes I feel like the bumpier or more difficult the road, the more yes. you're able to value something at the end. Yes. Of yeah. Yes. So when you talk to Haley and Hope, what do you yeah. say to them about your road to motherhood and how they came, how you all came to be a family? I tell them they were adopted and I'm not sure if they 100% know what that means. I always say, they, I always say, you didn't come from mommy's tummy. You came from my heart. And they understand that. And they said, did a baby ever come from your tummy? And I said, no, uh, it didn't. Uh, we haven't had the big discussions about it because I think that is to come. Yeah. But in this moment, they know that they're adopted. I tell them how cool it is. I tell them that their cousin Ella was adopted. And, you know, all the cool kids were adopted and they get such a kick out of that. And I'm also blessed because I live in New York and, you know, families come in so many different shapes and sizes and, you know, nobody, no, nobody pays attention to how that comes to be. It's just like, that's your mom, that's your dad, you're the kids next, you know, and I, I, I really, really value that. So they know, and little by little, I'll be telling them more and more about, about that part of their life. And I'm not afraid of it. I do imagine that at some point the girls will want to know who their birth moms are and families. And that's part of you. Yep. I mean, you know, it's part of who you are. You know, if you want to know, you should know. Well, thank you, Zoe. Thank, thank you, you so much. I appreciate you. This okay, was really I'll wonderful. see you soon. Okay. Thank you. Take thank care. You.